My entire goal was to protect my sisters. To me, a brother is a person who is there for you when you need him. Someone who will help you when you've fallen down. A person who will stand up for you when no one else will. A brother isn't just family, but a protector. I am lucky enough to be blessed with two exceptional sisters that I would do anything for. After a daily dose of pestering, of course. The problem is, I can't always be there for them. Both Charlotte and Kendra have went into fields where they are serving, protecting, and helping members of our community. Charlotte is currently an outreach service specialist within the medical industry, and Kendra was a deputy sheriff until she got promoted as the director of pretrial diversion. Both of my sisters do remarkable work within their industries, but they know how to give a little brother a heart attack. Kendra came home one day, and she told me a story. She said the most terrifying thing about my job is entering a hostile situation and not knowing where the suspect is located. She was able to depict the scene in a remarkable way. She said the house was absolutely massive, the door was wide open, and the suspect was nowhere to be seen. After her and her partner performed the search and seize, she felt relieved due to the fact this is the first one she's ever performed. This situation worried me. After she told me this, my imagination and curiosity started running wild. I wanted to do something. Actually, I just wanted to do anything I could to help her in these situations. So of course, my mind instantly went to inventing a drone. Because let's be real, what 16-year-old wouldn't want to build a drone? The problem is, I had little to no engineering experience at that time. The best part is, I wanted to do the unimaginable, which was design, build, and prototype a drone that could go into any situation to determine where a hostile threat is, based solely on the blueprints. As a 16-year-old, though, this concept seems absolutely ambitious, outrageous, and impossible to any one stretch of imagination. So I needed to learn, and I needed to learn fast. For me, the first step in this process is getting my hands on a $20 drone all the way to checking out every book within the library. I felt like I had copious amounts of materials at home, but I still needed something more. So I started to reach out to teachers who pointed me to others until I got what I call my big break. My big break is a group of people called Tech on Tap. They told me I could go to the brewery and present my concept. Let me take a step back here and say, as a 16-year-old trying to convince my parents to take me to a brewery so I could present a concept was impossible by itself. But somehow I did. So I went to this presentation and I seized the opportunity. I presented all my knowledge, three weeks worth of drone material, to this group. They gave me crazy looks. But everyone in that room offered me some type of support, ranging from a pat on the back to business card, all the way to calling in personal favors within the industry. This single presentation encouraged me to further pursue the impossible and protect my sisters. Immediately after this, I utilized all of the connections that I obtained, and I wanted to perfect my design. In my mind, the sketches needed to be absolutely perfect before I could even think about ordering hardware. The problem is, I lacked funding needed to get the drone off the ground. So, Kendra came home to me luckily one day and said, hey Ryan, you want to try to get a presentation with the fraternal order of police? I gave her an incredulous look. As she left the room, leaving me dumbfounded, she yelled, FYI, the presentation's next week. <laughs> I immediately had a heart attack because my drone, the guardian angel, was a sketch somewhere in my room. I was able to locate the sketches within the abyss and I converted them into a PowerPoint. But of course, once I actually arrived at the FOP lodge, I wouldn't have a projector to use, so I still had to wing the presentation. I still seized the opportunity and I took the stage. I presented my concept, and the same incredulous look that I gave my sister, officers gave me. But they had faith in me, and they fully funded the project. That night, I was so overwhelmed, excited, ready to do anything to actually touch the hardware. But I knew I needed to take a step back and learn everything and anything about drones. This is what I did for roughly three months. Once I felt comfortable with all the material, I finally touched the funds and ordered the hardware. It was an exciting part. The drone, or the guardian angel, was designed to go into a building autonomously and determine where a hostile situation is located. The officers will upload the building schematics into the CPU, and it will process the information. It will signal to officers that it is ready, based on the color of lights underneath the arms. Once it is ready, the officer will take the drone and put it into position. The drone will begin the predetermined path based on the building schematics and the blueprints to determine 
where a hostile is located. It will navigate through the building based on the building schematics and the turbulence being produced by the propellers. As it's doing this, it is sending video live back to any officer and constantly saving power. The best part is it has multiple redundancies to make sure that it can get its mission done, like having two CPUs and three propellers can be lost during the flight. This is the technology that I built, designed, and prototyped to protect my sisters and other officers within the force. Currently, it is being perfected and modified, but it is getting closer and closer every day to being in the hands across officers and around the entire country. At the same time, I was also competing in the International Science and Engineering Fair, where 14 million students compete for only 1,800 positions across the entire world. Leading up to this point, I earned awards ranging from Yale University, Notre Dame, every branch of the military, and even scholarships to my dream universities. However, the most important thing I found on this journey was my burning passion to succeed through innovation and creation. After this competition, I felt like I was never going to be able to achieve anything like this again because I couldn't even fathom what college was actually going to bring to me. Once I entered college, roughly two months after the competition, I became what I like to call the new kid on the block once again. As a freshman, I wanted to do anything. I wanted to be involved with the university. The first thing I did on campus was a competition called Startup Weekend. The dean sent out a massive email to all the students asking us to compete in this 72-hour grueling competition. So I seized the opportunity and I formed a team. At that event, me and my partners were able to develop the full business concept and a model to get this in the hands of officers. We presented in front of a panel of judges and we took home first place at this competition. This theme repeated at the preceding Startup Weekend, BizCom, and 8-Hour Challenge. Now, I do have to say that all of these competitions have been a true accomplishment. But for me, the true honor has been taking a single idea and turning it into reality for my sisters. On this journey, I learned that age does not define success, because all it took for me was a spark of curiosity spinning in to innovation. Thank you.